Happy, happy almost Christmas. Happy Christmas Eve. Happy Hanukkah. Happy everything, all things great for everybody. Um, today is going to be short, quick, and awesome. I have put together what I feel is the perfect play-by-play -play for your Christmas, your Hanukkah, your any big day in your life where you know there's like tons of company, tons of food, tons of like excess uh, calories, excess people, excess stress, excess energy. <laughs> so even though um, Christmas and Hanukkah were the inspiration for today's uh, Weeder Strong Tuesday, uh, I know it didn't work. It had to do it today early. Um, this can be really used. So keep this in your back pocket for any Big event. I know uh, even when my friends are having like their uh, their babies go through like their first birthday that like the one-year-old birthdays tend to be like a mega event so this is great for that too so I've got a list of 10 things 10 10 10 I just thought of my 10th one and what I've also gotten this email is a little screenshot so you can like put this uh, hold it as like your lock screen on your phone you can print it put it somewhere keep it in mind but keep it with you on uh, crazy days okay so number one Wake up and water chug. When you start your body with more water, everything is just better. You are not only will actually drink more water, which will help in better digestion throughout the day, you will actually not eat as much crappy stuff during the day as you're prepping and doing because when you're low on water, uh, your body actually can't tell the difference between being dehydrated and hungry. So you're gonna crave sugars and little shitty stuff along the way. This will help you um, stay off that and um, just keep in mind as a rule of thumb, you should have close to 40% of your of your daily water in before noon. So really push for that. I say wake up water truck. I've suggested 12 ounces. Um, but see, uh, see how far you can go and get there and it will really help. Number two, coffee yes, sugar no. When you're putting excess uh, sugars in your day, like I don't have desserts every day. I'm not, I'm not making... Um, you know, these pumpkin pies and these fun holiday things. And that, that, that's not like a daily thing for me. Uh, I'm guessing it's not for you as well. And so wherever you can kind of uh, uh, carve away some added sugars throughout the day, do it. And coffee is the first place sugar goes in my body. I always put a little in. So keep it out. Coffee, yes. Tea, yes. Sugar, no. Number three, please, please, please get your heart going. You have no idea the difference that it makes in your body just to walk, just to kind of pump your arms and pace it out. When you jumpstart your heart like that, your metabolism is set up in a completely different space and place for the day. So at the very minimum, if you're hosting, if you're doing a lot of cooking, I know my mom always hosts and my sister and I will go and help. If you don't have a ton of time, still take a 10 minute walk once and 10 minute walk later, but do it. If you want extra credit, get to a gym, get an extra lift in, grab a buddy, go, go get moving, sweating. It will change your life. And by the way, with the amount of excess calories that go in today and, uh, well, I'm thinking today like Christmas, but I mean like last night, like Christmas Eve, but today is Christmas Eve. So I'm doing like an inception. <laughs> what I'm trying to say though is extra calories came in Christmas Eve, extra calories came in all day Christmas. So not only do I want you moving Christmas, um, morning, day, even night. If you want to walk after dinner, that's fine. Get it in. You can absolutely um, do that. I want to make sure you get a workout in the next morning, Thursday morning, because you have excess fuel, aka calories, aka right energy in your system. I need you to burn it off. So tomorrow, make sure you work out and move, and as well as the day after Christmas, work out and move. Non-negotiables. Even if it's walks, it's enough for me. Number four. I know in my family, we always do kind of a pot luck dinner. Sorry, pot luck dinner. It's really important um, that even if your family doesn't do that, like if you do, you're lucky like me and I kind of bring dishes that I know I feel like safe around. I know it's not too fatty. I know I can get more greens in. Um, but if it's not a pot luck Christmas, maybe offer to bring something. Like offer to bring an app like shrimp and cocktail sauce. It's a protein. It's great, right? Um, offer to bring, you know, marinated olives, like a nice fat, like um, it's a healthy fat, small thing, so you're not like noshing on like, you know, the massive cheese platter and stuff like that. So keep that in mind and just know that when you bring something like that, two things happen. One, you've got kind of a healthy anchor on that spread where you know, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to not like totally blow off my goals right now. 
bring that vegetable, bring those leafy greens, bring the transformational dish, bring what you need to bring. And I'm telling you, everyone will be so grateful that you did it. So think about that. And, uh, and I think actually, what was it, a couple weeks ago, I gave you guys a transformational um, macaroni and cheese dish. So that's one dish, but think about how you can trade out cheeses for cauliflower, um, where you, instead of putting tons of olive oil on things, you can use a spray. Instead of tons of butter, you can minimize that. Instead of heavy cream, you can use a lighter cream. Think about those, those um, uh, how do I say it? Those kind of switch outs to kind of keep those caloric yields lower and uh, you feeling better. Number five, it's probably the hardest one I have to ask you to do, but it's the most effective. No bread, sorry, bread bust, keep it out. When you are having your appetizers, when you are sitting at dinner, keep out the bread. The gluten in there and the way the bread expands in our stomachs is frankly what makes us the most uncomfortable anyways. Now, if you are a bread fiend and you're like, Jen, I cannot live without the bread. I need the bread, I look forward to the bread. My grandmother, my mother makes fresh bread. I'll, I get it. Have a three by three square inch piece, eat it slow, enjoy the bleep out of it, and move on. But that's your piece. Do not use up that real estate for the other delicious food. And frankly, you're gonna have leftovers tomorrow anyways. I know you are, so, um, or the next day I should say. So, bread, keep it small, if not non-existent. Balance your booze, this is number six. Um, remember, like have a blast, have a blast. It's the holidays, please have so much fun. Expect your weight to kind of dip up and it'll dip back down. But when you are drinking alcohol, whether it's beer, uh, wine, uh, straight up booze, any of those, even kombucha, there's carbohydrates in there. You're drinking your carbs. So make sure if you're gonna drink throughout the day, during the day and throughout dinner, that's fine, I'm on board, I'll be doing it too. But you need to put less carbohydrates on your plate. So if you'd normally do a whole potato, do a half. If you do a whole scoop of rice or, you know, oh God, what's another thing, like a mashed potato or whatever it is, or like if you're doing stuffing at Christmas, gotta cut it back. If you are not drinking, don't worry about it. Ignore what I'm saying right now. But if you are, this is something you've got to stand, uh, stand by. Number uh, seven, uh, I've listed it on your checklist as 20% off, but no, this is not a sale. This is 20% off your plate. When you go up to that food line, uh, or uh, that's how we do it at my house anyways, we kind of plate our own food. I know that I have like a built-in pressure to finish whatever is put on my plate. So what I started doing about five years ago is I'm like, whatever I would normally put on, I take about 20 to 25% of each thing off. So I'm uh, not like take it on, scrape it off, but like put less on to begin with. Put, I would say 75% of what you normally would put on your plate. There should be space. It shouldn't be falling off your plate. You should have a little room between your food, okay? And at that point, two things are happening. One, you don't have this portion pressure that you need to finish. And number two, if there was anything on your plate that you really loved, you're like, oh, I've kind of got room to go back and enjoy it. Okay, so 25 to 20% off to start. Go back, get more if you need to. Or you might be perfectly satisfied, which is I have found at five years running that I never go out for more. I feel great and I'm glad that I didn't put more on my plate. Okay. Uh, number eight, um, desserts. Similar to number seven, it's really easy to go uh, gung-ho through apps, gung-ho through drinks, gung-ho through dinner, and then you're like, oh my God, desserts. Ugh, and you feel that full feeling. And then you still put tons of desserts on your plate anyways. So my rule of thumb, if I know I'm gonna have desserts, I think about that earlier. I think about how much wine I'm drinking during dinner, and I think about when I'm plating my dinner, that 75%, right? Um, how much I'm putting on there because I'm knowing, oh, my sister made that uh, that special cheesecake or my mom made her, you know, flourless chocolate cake or whatever it becomes. And what I would offer is make sure you leave space in mind when you make your dinner plate. And then when you go out for desserts, take one little bite, one tiny sliver of all the things you think you might want. I try them all. I need to. That's me. I'm crazy. I'm a Virgo. I want a taste of everything. Put one of each little bit thing on there. And then based on the bites, you do your own like top chef and you're like, aha, I would like a whole piece of cheesecake. Yep. That's what I'm doing. So instead of like just going gong on everything, you try it all, you enjoy it all, and you choose the one you really want. Okay. 
Uh, last two, number nine. So I know for me on days like Christmas Eve tonight and Christmas Day or any big day, I always have a digestive mindset, meaning I want to make sure there's water in my system, which we talked about earlier, number one. Um, sometimes I carry digestive enzymes with me. You can get them at Sprouts, Whole Foods, anything like that. Ask for help. It's a, basically a great aid in saying, oh, there's a higher amount of volume of food, higher volume of fat, carbs, proteins that my body might need assistance in breaking down. So those are all great things. However, something you can do that's also very easy is brew digestive tea. Now there's all there's ones you can make on your own. I'm sure if you went to like Martha Stewart, there'd be some fancy thing. I'm not going to fuck with that. I don't have the time nor the patience to do my own tea. But very easy on the market. There's there's teas. There's dandelion. My top four are dandelion, ginger, great digestive aid, peppermint, as well as fennel. So if you want to do make a single cup of tea like that for yourself, skip that cup of coffee, do a tea instead, or even skip that last cocktail, or take a break of a cocktails. Like go back to cocktailing, but like have one cup of tea. Or you could be like the superhero of the day and make a pot. And frankly, what I do is I take a, a pouch of these. I take I take my dandelion, my peppermint, my fennel. What was my last one? My ginger. Aha. And I take one of it, pop it in, make a big batch of it. And so the other people that need like a little tummy tonic, you have it for, and then you have it for yourself too. It's great. It's water. It's digestive support. And you're going to need it and love how you feel through the night and the next day. Okay. Uh, finally, number 10, it's probably my favorite. I think holidays come and go and it's such a blur and there's so much that goes on, but just like, like lay your head down and close your eyes and think about just three things that you were just really excited about during the day. Whether it was a conversation, a family member you hadn't seen in a while, um, maybe a little kid in the family that's finally like talking and like remembers your name. Like think about the small things that make your life your own and be grateful for them. Um, because I think sometimes we let these holidays come and go and we don't slow down enough to give them a big squeeze and remember how um, special they are and how important that your role in that holiday has been for everybody too. So, okay, that's it. I love you guys. Happy, happy holidays. And I'll be seeing you next week.